So good morning from Memorial Park in Ladner. I'm here at the comparative crack of dawn. It's a quarter to seven now on a beautiful Friday morning. I'm here to um, take some time-lapse footage of the Cenotaph, which is just over here. I have my other camera set up doing a little bit of interval uh, shooting and hopefully I'll be able to put a nice little sequence together, 10 or 15 seconds worth or so uh, to use at some point during the film. So I wanted to just do another podcast, let you guys know how things are going. I showed a, a rough cut of the film to uh, Nikki, Ross and Cindy on Friday evening last, and that was very helpful. Let me give you the Cliff's Notes version of how the Great War started. This Bosnian gunman shot these two Austrians dead. The Austrian government wanted to punish the Serbian government because a Serbian terrorist cell had provided the gun. However, Serbia was friends with Russia who promised to help Serbia in the event of any trouble from the Austrians. Um, one of the things I find when I'm working on a piece by myself is that I get to a point where I almost can't see the wood for the trees. It just becomes difficult to, to, to figure out what's going on. So to show it to three other people, uh, you know, who are sort of arm's length to a degree is, is very helpful. Um, I mentioned in a previous podcast that I have an embarrassment of riches and I think one of the difficulties uh, arising from that is the fact that I'm not going to be able to use all the footage that I shot. What I've decided to do in, in the interest of keeping the film down to probably less than 100 minutes is that some stuff is just not going to make it. So I'm going to use these podcasts as a place to at least show some of that. So the bit that I'm going to show you now um, is uh, some footage that we shot at Shorncliffe Military Cemetery just outside of Folkestone. We shot this on the Saturday when Rodney Kilby very kindly drove us around for the afternoon. Like all the cemeteries that we will visit um, on this trip, it's beautifully taken care of. It's a real credit to the men and women who, who look after it and those who work for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Um, I'm always struck when I walk through these places, and I've been through a couple of them now, at the ages of the men who lie here. I'm always shocked by how young they are. I'm standing here looking at a, somebody called F.M. Walker, he's Canadian, age 21. Behind him, somebody called McDonald, age 18. Um, a private Iliff, age 21. We walk across here to this slightly unusual, it's obviously a, it's a, it's a proper grave rather than the ones that are typical for uh, military cemeteries, but this, uh, this is Sergeant W. Brown, and he's from Montreal, and he's age 21, and it says, killed on active service, May 25th, 1917. It's just, it's just stunning, as I said, as you walk along to see how well the, the place has been taken care of, and it speaks to, it speaks to respect for, for the men who, who fought and died and are buried here. It, it speaks to honour and, and all of those things. But there's another uh, slightly darker element about the, uh, some of the burials at Shorncliffe, and I don't know where those are, but there were a number of Canadian troops who committed suicide during the Great War. Their verdicts were given as a sort of death by misadventure or death while insane or death while the balance of his mind had been disturbed. So there was an attempt to, to, to try and treat them kindly. And as a result of that, many of the men were buried here in this cemetery. The only ones who were not buried here, I suspect, were the Catholics, because the Catholics then and now have a real problem around suicide. That is the ultimate final mortal sin that you can commit. So anybody who was Catholic who took his own life would not have been buried on holy ground. But this is a magnificent cemetery. I just love the fact that it's got this gorgeous slope to it. And I think these kinds of cemeteries so beautifully taken care of and, and, and laid out, I think encourage people to visit. Certainly I would be happy to spend time here. I mean, it is a place of the dead, but it's not, it's not a morbid place. There's a certain joy about it. There's been real care taken with the plants between the stones and all of that. So there's real uh, love um, and attention being uh, paid here. So it's, it's, it's quite a gorgeous place. And I'm looking forward to Stephen taking us here tomorrow. He may be able to tell us a little bit more. So that's about the size of it. We have a few more scenes to, uh, to film. Uh, one on Remembrance Day and a small reenactment that I'm planning to do um, in about two weeks' time. So anyway, more about that later. Thanks. Bye.